Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Kelly. My guests are Alistair Turner from Pipital and Pratik Burma from Blue Talon. Gentlemen, welcome. Why don't we start off with some introductions. Alistair, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do at Pivotal? I'm a data engineer in the London office, so I get involved with helping our customers figure out where the product's valuable and, and how to use it. Spend most of my time on Greenplum. Mm -hmm. Great. And Pratik, tell us about yourself and, and Blue Talon for our, our audience members who maybe uh, aren't familiar with the company. Great. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks, Alistair. Um, my name is Pratik Verma. I'm the founder of Blue Talon. And we started Blue Talon to enable enterprises to simplify security so they can get the most out of their data from big, big data platforms like Greenplum, Hadoop, and anything else that comes um, on their way while complying with privacy regulations. Great. And I think this is a really timely conversation considering what's been happening out in the wider world with Facebook and some of the other privacy discussions we're seeing out there. Um, even Washington is taking note. So I'm curious, maybe Alistair, start with you. What do you think are the lessons enterprises should take from this, what we're seeing out there in the wider world? Enterprises that need to use data and analytics to you know, inform their business decisions and also make great products for their customers, but obviously they don't want to end up on the wrong side of the privacy issue. What, what lessons can they take from this? So I think it's important to, to know that they're there, there are two areas of this that they need to pay attention, that the enterprises need to pay attention to. The first one is that they're doing the right thing with their customers' data, and that's, that's not really an issue for, for us as technologists. That's a, a question of, of processes and policies. But there's also the question of that the right people have access to that data, that they can control who, who gets the data. And that, I think, is the, the pinning question, because if you can't control who gets hold of the data, you can't make any reasonable statements that you're going to be transparent about how it's used, that you're going to control how it's used. So the sort of, the, if you like, the, the privacy versus confidentiality question is, is, is quite an important so it's more distinction here. Yeah. Yeah, what, what yeah and I agree. So the focus has been historically on technology, but we found, so we've been working with a G10 central bank, we've been working with an industrial company. So when we went and talked to those people, they really had a mentality of, okay, if somebody wants access to the data, they would go find the owner and say, hey, do you approve this request? And that got in the way. On the flip side, if they made the data fully accessible, then they would you know, have reputational risk, they'll have other kind of risk associated with it. So actually, one of the things that we're gonna talk about later today in the talk at the conference, we worked with an industrial company where they took the question slightly different way from a process perspective, which is, if I have all the data and I wanted to democratize it to make it accessible to a wide number of people, what if I flip the question to what is the risk of enabling access to the data? So from that way, they were able to categorize the data from a business process perspective and basically start from an allow by default for unrestricted data and then restrict, allow by, you know, deny by default only for the most restrictive data so they can take advantage of this broad, broad, wide set of data that they can make accessible to employees within the company and outside. And that's really, I think, what enabled the rest of the thing to flow really well. Hmm, that's interesting. So, and what role do you think privacy regulations are going to play in this? We've got GDPR are happening in the EU, I believe, next month. So when you're assigning risk to different types of data, I imagine you certainly have to take into account uh, those regulations and how that impacts who can see the data and when, that kind of thing. What do you think the role of those type of regulations is going to really be and the impact it's going to have on enterprises? So GDPR is you know, on everybody's mind. So most of what we hear about through our partners from Greenplum and from Cloudera and from everybody else is people trying to turn on enablement of their data platforms. And they say, well, I'm storing PII data. What do I have to do? So in our experience, you, know, you can share your, your, what your work is. But in our experience, there's two kinds of things that we encounter. The first one is making sure that you mask the PII and put appropriate controls around it. And second one's been mostly about if somebody gives you consent for the data, how do you manage controls around that? Now, we spent, we're a technology company, so we've spent a lot of time thinking about how do we simplify that by providing the software tools, but at the heart of it, those are the two problems that we've been trying to solve. Yes, uh, th th uh, we definitely also see this question of people saying we, we already have all this data and we, we need to know that we're, we're using it responsibly, that we're protecting it from, from abuse by, by insiders as well. So a lot of this isn't, isn't just about um, you know, what, what happens if we're hacked. It's, it's also about what, what happens if, if the DBAs and those, mm -hmm. those sorts of people inside the organization who have historically had full access by default, what happens if they, if they misbehave? We see the question around masking. We see the qu question around making it possible to use, to use this data without disclosing the, the sensitive pieces to, to users like data scientists who actually need to be able to, to join data up and to, to analyze it in quite a lot of depth. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so, Pratik, tell us a little bit more about specifically how Blue Talon approaches this, this challenge of security and privacy. Give us a little bit of a, a quick deep dive, if you could, into the product and how it really approaches it. Sure. The, the one thing to know about Blue Talon is we simplify security across multiple data platforms. So historically, what enterprises have had to do is take in the data, store it in one data platform, put some controls around in that, then do it completely differently in another platform where they may use it for another purpose. Now, with Blue Talon, they don't have to do that because you centralize the policies in one place, in one easy to interactive use uh, GUI, and then those get enforced across data platforms um, by the software itself. Now, what we've done is looked around all the different ecosystem and say, okay, what exists in each individual data platform and can we coordinate? We found that in a bunch of places we can, in a bunch of other places we can't do that, so we've had to create our unique components that fit inside the different data platforms so that we can provide the capabilities. And you know, the things that I'm talking about are things like row level control, file level controls, um, maskings at the column level, dynamic policies, things like that. There's a variety of different type of levers you want to be able to do. And so people can simplify policies by defining in one place with Blue Talon, and then have the Blue Talon component translate it for the appropriate component down below. And that's what makes it really powerful. And that's part of, the, our unique approach really comes from our ability to be in path the request and saying, can you allow this request or deny this request? But more importantly, can you modify the request such that you get subset of the data? And that middle ground between nothing and everything is the most powerful world in the place where all of us kind of live. Right, so it's not an all or nothing question with Blue Talent. So Alistair, talk a little bit about the integration uh, of Blue Talent with Greenplum, uh, how that works, and, and what are some of our customers doing uh, with respect to both products? The place where we first sort of really started working with Blue Talon was in these environments where customers have Hadoop environments and Green Plum environments together and where they're, they're trying to enforce a, a consistent access model across those. So the, the Blue Talon policies define a, a level of sensitivity around the data that's stored in the Green Plum database and have defined the same markers for the, the data that's been offloaded or the sources for that data that are that's still stored in, stored in the Hadoop world. Um, the, other, the other interesting place where we see a, a great lot of value from the policy-driven approach is when we are dealing with encryption in database. We have partnerships with a, a number of encryption providers, and a lot of the implementation in the past has been around manually building code to integrate that encryption into, into the database. Where, where a policy-driven solution like Blue Talon makes, makes that a lot easier is that the query can be re rewritten on the way in, so it, it's, it's transparent to the user which fields are encrypted, it's and it's transparent to the DBAs which ones need to be decrypted on the way out. The DBAs don't have access to any of the um, encryption keys, which, makes, which takes them out of the firing line for any, any sort of privacy breaches, and it, that, that separation of duties just makes a lot of the, the risk managers a lot more comfortable as well. Yeah. And I'll sort of add to that, I think the Greenplum ecosystem on security partnerships really you know, got a very good collaborative approach here. So we've got you know, the, the controls within the database itself, so we've got strong authentication. Then you add on top of that partnerships like ours that focus in on more authorization, masking, those kinds of things, along with encryption partnership with you know, ZSAD, uh, Protegrity, uh, Microfocus, all together. We're able to collaborate where you can say the end user comes in, they can authenticate using native security, integrate with us, get the policies that ends up driving different encryption behavior with the strong cryptography that's provided by the partnership. And so that end-to-end -end ecosystem is what I think enterprises benefit from the most because they don't want to sit around and try to you know, fiddle with everything and try to figure out how to plug all everything together. And having a strong ecosystem like this is very valuable. Great. So uh, finally, Pratik, how can Greenplum customers that are interested uh, in Blue Talent, how can they get started? How can they learn more about you? So I'm really excited um, because at the conference today, we have, we're actually providing an offering particularly fine-tuned for Pivotal customers with Greenplum and specifically. So we've created a sandbox so you can come meet us at the booth or um, email me or the company at info at Blue Talent to get access to that sandbox. And we're looking forward to um, sharing that on PivNet as well. So we'll be announcing that shortly. Great, fantastic. Well guys, thanks so much for taking time out of your day. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks. Bye.